Welcome back to the channel. We are James and Michelle, and we are standing in our newly excavated hole with the formwork for the footings in place for our geothermal rammed earth greenhouse. We're going to show you some pictures of what this looks like, some concept pictures of our actual design for this, this project. This is a project that we haven't seen done before. We're really trying our hardest to combine aesthetics and function with greenhouses as we did with the one behind us. So that one worked for us really well. This will be year three of growing our own food. Uh, we have a glass greenhouse and we have a no-dig garden, but we've had a really good luck, if you want to call it luck, growing food here. One of the reasons that we're investing so much into this particular greenhouse, it's actually quite large. It's going to be close to 1,200 square feet. Um, and we want it to function for all four seasons because where we live in the climate we get quite cold down to last year We had a week stretch of 37 Celsius minus 37 Celsius. Yeah, so not warm um, We live in British Columbia, Canada. <laughs> it gets real cold here in the winter yeah, So that's our big function because as many of you probably know the quality of the produce that you buy And is, the price and the price is nowhere near what it used to be and Growing your own food is extremely rewarding. She does most of the growing. I'm learning from her, which is awesome. Yeah, but she builds it and I grow it. Yeah, and um, just the quality of the food Yeah. and the taste. It's it's really, really rewarding. We, we hope we inspire more people, because we've inspired a few, mm -hmm. to even grow off their balconies or any any take any opportunity you can. It's, it's, uh, it's definitely worth it. This project is something that's actually never been done before. Um, all year round passive solar greenhouses, yes, have been done before. The round earth that we're going to be putting in has never been done before and we're using it as a the thermal mass. It's ability to absorb uh, heat or cold. S store the heat. Yeah, so, so it will store heat and cold as well. So the other thing that we're doing, the reason that the whole hole is excavated is we are going to put in a climate battery with a series of uh, pipes and manifolds that move air through the ground to essentially where we're standing because the finished height is going to be approximately as tall as Michelle mm -hmm. when we'll be walking up here inside the greenhouse. Yeah. So all that air will be moving inside the earth to keep the warm up the earth later on in the season and then ideally that stores the temperature later on when it's colder and we need to pull it back out. I.e. the climate battery. Yeah, that's like a really quick description of it. Yes, we will link the playlist for this entire build. So we're going to go start to finish. If you're interested in building your own greenhouse, thermal mass, climate batteries, solar greenhouses, anything like that, uh, please make sure to subscribe to our channel. We hope that you enjoy this project as much as we are and will be and please leave us a comment if you've seen anybody that's done this if you're in the process of doing it yourself we want to hear from you so drop us a comment we answer and read all the comments and thanks so much for watching we hope you enjoy it
depth set. Pretty cool thing. Leave the head out for you so it's easy to pull. Look. So, got a little bit of work done here in the hole. It's been about two weeks since we actually dug the hole. Uh, I was waiting for some engineering in regards to sizing out the footings, which is what I'm doing here for the formwork. Got some of it staked up, as you can see, set to height. Got the builder's level in place. And this hole gets really hot in the afternoon, which is why we chose this location on our property. So having said that, it's going to be beneficial to do as much as I can in the mornings here for the summer to get this uh, going because it, yeah, it was cooking in this hole yesterday pretty good. Michelle will be out here soon. Going to finish leveling these off and uh, got a whole bunch of steel that I'm going to have to put in. It's actually calling for five rows in the footing. So I'll have five rows of steel in here with uh, perpendicular transverse bars at 24 inch on center. So that's what I'm going to get cracking on here today. Beautiful, can't complain. It's nice to have a project where I can walk out the door and work on it instead of having to leave the property. So, another beautiful day, made some progress in the hole, I'll just bring you over there with the footings. And you can see that we've got all the perimeter pieces put in place, walk down the ramp. So yeah, we got... Uh, Footings in. The footings are going to be three feet wide inside. You can see we've got this set all nice and nice and level across. I've got minimal stakes in right now because I want to create ease of access just for getting all this lovely material in there, the steel. So we're going to be doing five rows of steel in the footing with transverse bars every two feet. So we got a bunch of steel to cut. And before I put the steel in, I'm also going to do the bagged footing method. So we're going to take lumber tarps and we're going to attach them to the inside of the forms. And they're going to bulge out a little bit around on the bottom, which is down here. But typically, you would, you would fill this in with wood and help, help it hold. Um, but we're going to use these lumber tarps and it's going to bulge out give you a little bit more width on the base of the concrete and save you from putting a bunch of wood in and it's a way to use up these lumber tarps that I'm sure there's a ton of them that go in landfills so I'm kind of excited to try it because it's going to be a time saver I also wanted to show kind of the idea of the whole building from this perspective at this point in time so we've got my chicken scratch here, which is really hard to see. Let's probably do this on a better piece of paper. But we are 30 feet this way, and we're going to be 44 feet across this way. 
to the greenhouse. And the round earth walls are going to be 18 inches thick. You can kind of see that there. This wall detail but I got a bit more information on that so just give you a, a quick idea of what we're doing if you have built anything before you might be curious about the engineering details of it so we're gonna get going with this uh, bagged footing and also yeah I guess the other reason for the stakes um, being spread out is it's gonna allow me to get the tarp the lumber tarps out a little bit more and I can stake right through them um, once I do that, it just help me for consistency for putting those in place. So, get moving on that, and then all the steel will go on top of that, uh, on top of the tarp. So you want to contain the concrete. What's got going on here? I planted some things. Whoa. So, I planted arugula. So we've got arugula, kale, arugula, kale. Yeah. And I literally planted this, like, last week yeah. and look at they're already up i just thinned them out because cool. they were all bunched together mm -hmm. but something that's really cool is that arugula um well it's not the only thing that does this but arugula smells like arugula <laughs> even at this stage oh yeah yeah smell it's like the alaskan said when it when the seed the seeds like sealed up with all that energy and when it sprouts it yeah. all goes right into the plant. Yeah. It smells delicious. I know. I thought arugula was supposed to take a while, but Hey. Okay. Hey. Dinner search. Beautiful. What's it oh, look like? It's the salad. It looks good. I Yum. just wish the stuff was from my garden. Mm. Soon. Great. <laughs> Next time on the Thai Life. <laughs> okay, so. What are for... you going to get me to do? Okay, so we got a uh, chop saw with a metal blade. Ha, 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 ha.